Or why are you coming to hold on to my husband for like 35 seconds plus? Let the Holy Spirit be your confidant. They are laughing. You know, your, your spouse is not even laughing with you, but they are laughing with this person cackling. Do you want to give me high blood pressure? Do you want to kill me? I'm not ready to die. I'm too young. Let's not do that, okay? Let's be classy. Some of those things are not really classy. Hi guys and welcome back to Owen Brandy's channel. If it's your first time stopping by, you are most definitely welcome. But if it's not, welcome back. So this is another episode of the Gen Z Wife Tales. You guys absolutely loved the first video where we talked about in-laws. But today, probably because you've already seen the title, you already kind of know where this is going. We're going to be talking about something a little bit more sensitive, a little bit more vulnerable for some women, but it's something that needs to be said. I'm a Gen Z wife and most of these conversations are usually had by millennials, by baby boomers, by other generations. But as we Gen Z are starting to get to the point of marriage and as some of us are already married, our younger ones are coming through that are going to be married soon. Someone has to be saying these things. These conversations need to be had, especially in a time like this where it seems like there aren't any boundaries anymore. So let's talk about it. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about boundaries with other women or other men in marriage, basically boundaries with the opposite sex. I might be talking a lot um, based off boundaries with other women just because I'm a woman as well. It's just easier to go off that way. So setting boundaries, what that looks like, why we need to set boundaries, why people don't even know that they should be respecting those boundaries. Let's get into it. I got the idea to make this video from our very own Tolula Pet Solutions. She probably doesn't even know I exist, but in case you're watching this, I love you so much. You are doing amazing. You're killing it as a mom. And I hope I'm able to share my points just as beautifully as you did yours. So we're going to be talking about boundaries that I have set in my home and well, not just me, my husband and I have set in our home against the opposite sex and how we relate with the opposite sex. What do you think? If you're watching right now, leave a comment down below and let me know. Do you think it's important that we set boundaries in our marriages, in our relationships? Like, what do you think about boundaries with the opposite sex? Does it matter? Is it important or are we just doing too much? Okay, so I'm going to be talking mainly from my perspective, right? Let me give a little backstory into all of this, okay? So my husband and I have been dating since we were teenagers, um, since we were about 17 in our first year of university. To find out how we met and all of that, all the videos are there, all the videos, I'll try and link, I'll try and link, all the videos are there. But we've been dating for so long, so a lot of our friends are all a lot of our friends are both our friends if that makes sense so a lot of my friends that i made personally became his friends whether male or female i have more female friends so my female friends also became my now husband's friends as well and obviously back in the day we were just dating there were there there was need for boundaries but it wasn't even that deep like more things could just pass along more things could flow more things could go like unnoticed because obviously we were just dating we we're just trying to navigate our lives not it wasn't anything serious nothing nothing deep okay but as we move to the point of getting engaged getting married we decided that okay we need to draw boundaries we need to make boundaries because now we're not just simply dating we're not just getting to know each other we are now an item right and i would want my friends and i would want and he also would want his friends to respect the union that we have so there had to be boundaries drawn in our relationship and you might be wondering what is the importance of drawing boundaries or why is this even a thing in the first place so setting boundaries with the opposite sex in your marriage is so important in maintaining trust, in maintaining respect, and in the general well-being of your marriage or your whatever relationship that you have that you want to set boundaries in. It is so important for the general well-being of that relationship. If I don't know that I can trust you with another person, like how then can this relationship work if i don't know that i can leave you in a room with a woman and every, like nothing is going to happen that relationship cannot work and my husband and i have decided that everything is on the table for us there are no secrets there are no hidden agendas 
I don't want to have to guess. I don't want to be put in any uncomfortable situation and neither does he. I don't want to have him like guessing, oh, is something going on? Is something not going on? Save your partner all that stress. Like it's not worth it. So in order to do that, these boundaries have to be set. I have to know that, okay, if he's crossing this line, then something is up. If he's crossing this line or if I'm the one crossing those lines, then something is off. Okay. In Toilet of Her Solutions video, she spoke about like some things that people do that are absolutely ridiculous. For example, like they'll be hitting your man's head or like obviously his friends, right, that are female, will be hitting his head, sitting on his lap or like texting at ridiculous hours, wanting to be his so comfort, wanting to be his comforter, wanting him to comfort her at odd hours. And she said that maybe you might just need a therapist. <laughs> that was funny. But yeah, there's some things that people do that obviously this is just, it's just ridiculous. I don't want to have to be second guessing or oh, is something going on? We're not, we're not children. We're not in primary school. We're not in high school. Like we are older. We are more mature. I, I personally don't really have serious, um, I don't think I've had any issues with my friends because my friends are actually very emotionally intelligent, which I, I give that one to them 100%. They don't do weird things like that. Sometimes they might, some of my friends will even come through me if they wanted to ask Olumide for something, which I think I, I absolutely respect that because it might be such like a sensitive conversation that I have to be the one to help them deliver the message if they're going directly. It's weird. And I want you to guys to understand that some things are just not okay like some things are just weird okay mm -mm, don't do it and i just want to talk about some reasons why it's very important to establish boundaries um in your marriage i'm going to be using marriage a lot because i'm married and it's just the stage of life that i'm in but some reasons why it's so important to establish boundaries in your marriage number one like i mentioned before is for trust and loyalty sake like you don't want your partner to ever have to second guess whether they can trust you or whether you are loyal to them do you want to give me high blood pressure do you want to kill me i'm not ready to die i'm too young i don't want to have to deal with this and I want to know that I can trust you. I don't want to, if you tell me it's morning, I don't want to go outside to check for myself whether it's morning or it's afternoon or it's evening. That's not what marriage should be. Like marriage should be a hundred percent trust and a hundred percent vulnerability. It's so important to create boundaries because it helps to make your partner know that they can they, they, they can be secure in that relationship. It creates a beautiful foundation for your relationship and Everybody knows that, you know, I know my place. I have my place in my marriage. Nobody is fighting with me for that place. I'm my husband's best friend. And some people might not do this, and that's okay. But in our marriage, in our relationship, we're each other's best friends. I'm, I'm his best friend. He's my best friend. The deepest things, the deepest thoughts that sometimes I even try to quench those thoughts in myself, I should be comfortable telling it to my husband. And I hope that he's comfortable telling it to me as well. It's just easy. It just makes marriage easier. It makes life so much easier. Here. The second reason why setting boundaries is so important is because it protects the emotional intimacy between you and your spouse. I have to know that your deepest thoughts, the thing that bothers you the most, you are able to be intimate with me about that emotionally. Have you seen people that, first of all, for this to make sense to you, you have to believe in such a thing as emotional cheating. And I think that is a thing, cheating on your partner emotionally, thinking that you can confide in someone else more than you confide in your partner. Mm-mm. Mm -mm, we're not doing that. Gen Z wives, we're not taking that. I have to be the person that my partner trusts the most, that he's able to confide in me about every single thing. Even if it's something that relates to us, like it's take it to me or take it to the Holy Spirit. Like that is it. Let the Holy Spirit be your confidant and let the Holy Spirit speak to me, which is why it's also important that you guys are both like on, on the same or very similar level spiritually because if something is happening, as opposed to going around talking to random people about that situation you can go to the holy spirit and one thing the holy spirit knows how to do is convict and correct and that's one period i personally believe that sharing like personal feelings sharing personal thoughts sharing personal concerns should primarily be left for your partner between you and your spouse and no one and no one else like why if your partner is having a win and the first person they think about to call is not you there's something off there. 
there's something off there. If they're having a loss or there's something so like something that's hurt them so much and they don't think about calling you first to confide in you and for you to be their comforter, obviously after the Holy Spirit, okay? <laughs> for you to be their comforter, then there's something going on there and but those boundaries need to be set between like the person they would rather talk to about situations and them like it's not it's not okay another one that is actually very deep and what people don't understand is that if you're not able to set boundaries in your marriage or in your relationship then how how can you curtail like infidelity or how can you curtail temptations that will come because i promise you temptations will come but then if you don't have those clear boundaries set you're going to fall to temptation you're going to fall to temptation i feel like a lot of these things that i'm saying is just to make just to put preventive measures in place like you're not why are you trying to <laughs> why are you pushing yourself inside a fire that you don't need to be inside like just for preventive measures people also need to understand that without boundaries right misunderstandings jealousy envy can arise for no reason they're just going to make your partner become like sneaky they'll be trying to read your messages they'll be trying to read your chats like you can pre you can just prevent your partner from going through such emotional distress if boundaries are put in place there's no need for us to be doing that there's no need for me to be wondering what you are doing at this particular hour of the night when i'm sleeping if i wake up and you're not beside me is the first thing i'm thinking about oh is he on the phone with that person or is he doing this and that i want to know that okay if he's not sleeping beside me maybe he's, he has gone to get water maybe he has gone to pee let my first intention not be something negative and it's setting boundaries that will prevent all these sorts of things from happening so I've gone ahead to categorize these boundaries into four main categories. The first category is physical boundaries. The second is emotional. The third is communication. And the fourth is spiritual. Yes, spiritual, we'll get there. So number one is physical boundaries. So some examples of physical boundaries would include like personal space. Just imagine if there is a whole living room space to sit down, but then that particular person comes and decide to sit beside your partner right beside them right next to them in the name of or oh, friendship or whatever yes it's nice honestly oftentimes it may even be like there might be no intentions behind it but it's just the heart of what you're doing it's just being mindful that okay i don't want this like or this person's partner might not be comfortable with it let me sit somewhere else you don't have to sit so close to my husband before you before i know that he's your friend and obviously none of these things i've not experienced anything i'm just telling you guys things that i don't want to even have to experience or have to deal with in the future right Phys um physical boundaries could also include like the amount of contacts that they have to make to each other like why do you guys have to follow yourselves all, all around why do you guys have like what well, even some something as little as giving a hug they are really nice friendly like emotionless hugs but why are you coming to hold on to my husband for like 35 seconds plus like okay greet greet easily greet gently and let's move on with our day they're just these things are just things that you would think that people just know but maybe they don't so please let's spell it out let's spell it out right now obviously things like handshakes hugs they are normal then it's, it's not an issue they're usually that's very cordial very okay but when it gets too much like you're trying to rub his head or you're trying to be doing too much mm -mm. Let's not do that, okay? Let's be classy. Some of those things are not really classy. Let's stay classy. Let's stay guided. Okay, girlies? Okay. I would also include time spent together under physical boundaries as well. In our marriage, there's something that is called a time frame boundary. So time frame boundaries are basically, okay, between the hours of 12 to 8, that is perfect for us to like be outside or chilling or maybe having dinner or whatever with the with someone of the opposite sex anything outside those hours is it's, we're not doing it it's we don't want to do it it's okay when this is just our family we're not doing that 12 to 8 makes sense and like why are you having breakfast with my husband why are you having late night dinners with my husband except it's like something relating to business except you know some you know what all these things are very subjective because 
like there are things that are maybe important maybe it's an emergency whatever that's perfectly okay but you're saying on monday wednesday fridays i have long, <laughs> breakfast with olu I, are you his wife no you're not so mm -mm, that's not acceptable let's move on you guys, I'm sorry, as I'm filming this video, it's so funny to me because so these things are just funny. They're very funny. You think they do, people don't do this? People do it all. People do it. And we need to actually be talking about it because it's not okay. Okay, okay, girlies, it's not. Next, let's move over to emotional boundaries. It's very, well, this, this is probably even the one that's deepest for me. Emotional boundaries. And I kind of already spoke about it before. Um, you should not be emotionally attached seriously to anyone that is not your partner not your spouse why why for what reason why do you want to be telling your good news to that person first why do you want to confide in that person to, to the extent that some people even go ahead and report their spouses to this third party like so that the person will do what scold me or what's like i'm not understanding it's not acceptable it's it's it can't work it can't work okay we're not doing that the easiest way that i would even say it is that anything that could lead your heart elsewhere just put a boundary around it just put a boundary around it there's no need for you to be Touch, uh, touching it a little just dabbling in it there is no need anything that could make you almost cheat almost anything that is is creating that attachment to another person that is not your spouse is not necessary for example spending more time with this person than you're spending with your spouse constantly thinking about this person more than you think about your spouse or even your family have you prayed this morning no but you won't talk to that person first why why are you doing that no 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 no, no. It, it can't work because little at a time little drops of water literally leads to the mighty ocean little at a time you would start having emotions towards that person and from one thing leads to another let's not do that let's not put ourselves through unnecessary duress it's not it's not the vibe okay. now let's talk about boundaries around communication when is it okay to text and call someone that's in a relationship when is it okay to text and call someone that's married some people may not really care about this they don't mind but i personally i mind okay please after 9 10 p.m it is already too late let this man be with his wife let this woman be with her husband it's so we i think there is such a time such a thing as too early and too late when it comes to co like communicating with someone of the opposite sex that is not your spouse another thing you can look at under communication is how much should you be talking how much how much is too much talk time how much is too much talk time? If someone is able to keep your husband or wife away from you on the phone for two, three hours, they're laughing. You know, your, your spouse is not even laughing with you, but they're laughing with this person cackling. Bruh, me personally, I know that I'll be like, ah, what's going on here? What's going on? Please involve me in that conversation. I want to know what you're talking about. <laughs> this is me. Oh. It might not, might not be a problem for you, but this is me just speaking on behalf of myself for myself if you agree leave a comment below if you don't still leave a comment i'd love to hear your opinion and the final one that a lot of people do not consider but is actually so deep probably the deepest is spiritual boundaries spiritual boundaries my husband and i are pastors and we have to set spiritual boundaries what a lot of people don't realize is that the more that you spend time with praying with someone the more that you spend time spiritually merged with a person it can lead to your heart just going attracted to that person. I feel like there was so much I wanted to say about the intimacy of prayer. Praying with your spouse or with anyone in general intensifies your spiritual bond or strengthens your spiritual bond with that person. When you pray together with someone, you are basically being vulnerable with God and being vulnerable with that person as well. So that level of vulnerability just leads to emotions growing. Prayer builds trust. Prayer also makes you feel loved. When I pray with my husband or when my husband and I are praying together, there's this level of emotional intimacy that's being built. And when either of us pray specifically about anything relating to us, it kind of like you can just... It's kind of like you can just feel it in your heart prayer would build spiritual bond prayer helps you see people as god sees them prayer builds security prayer is also very much attractive do you know that you guys know that anointing is attractive <laughs>
Um, jokes apart though, these are the things that I wanted to share, but I think I just couldn't find the right words. Obviously, I do not mean in any way that um, you cannot pray with somebody else because they are of the opposite sex. No, it is that you should also be praying with your partner. It is that your partner should be your biggest prayer prayer partner if that makes sense um rather than somebody else because it does build emotional and spiritual intimacy yeah you guys don't know that praying is a huge praying together with someone is a huge form of intimacy that's why sometimes I'll, i recommend that a lot of people if you know that you, yeah, this person is not your forever person don't go and start praying with them or don't go and start getting involved with them spiritually because your heart will just be <laughs> merging with them there's a huge level of pouring out that we always have to do with our mentees and all of that and i'm not talking about any of that stuff we me i love praying with people i love rendering like rendering help in any way that i can specifically like spiritually praying i love it so much it's always better for your spiritual mentor not to be someone of the opposite sex it's just always better because <laughs> oh, prayer prayer is the master key is a measure it can merge you and this is why it's also so important for you to be praying with your own spouse as often as you can because it's a deep form of intimacy that cannot even be explained it cannot be explained when those spirits are moving ah. let me not just start speaking in tongues right now because because <laughs> well yes that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you understood the heart of the message this is not to say that your partner should not have friends of the opposite sex it's just that there should be boundaries that you set in your marriage obviously my husband has friends of the opposite sex i have friends of the opposite sex so it's just the boundaries that matter once you're able to set these boundaries in place you realize that it's easy breezy beautiful easy breezy be beautiful you don't want the other person to ever feel like oh am i doing too much am i nagging too much once those boundaries are set all of those will not be an issue so yes hope you enjoyed another episode of gen z wife tales and we'll see you on the next one